What I'm going to share with you are some of my explorations throughout this world. Most of these pertain specifically to the environment and what's happening out there. Trip down memory lane for me. Um, I'm going to start with So I'm going across Drake's Passage, the most treacherous body of water in the world. And I'm thinking back about the extraordinary explorers who have come before me. Shackleton, John Falcon Scott, Isabella Bird, just over a hundred years ago, seeing this place for the first time. And now here I am, less than a hundred years ago hundred years later, witnessing its slow death. Less than a hundred years. This is what we've done. This is what's happening to our planet. Those are small penguins in the bottom right-hand corner just behind that blue iceberg. That was probably the most difficult thing in Antarctica was scale. But what happens in six degrees warms in the Antarctic Peninsula, what does that mean to the Sudan? What does it mean to the people that live there? When drought becomes famine, in the ecological disaster that is Darfur, even if Darfur was to be halted today, it is an absolute economic apocalypse. What does it mean to stand before this man, to kneel, to look into his eyes, for him to have the dignity to give me this photograph? as we redefine what is photography, not taking photographs like non-profit. This is not something I take from this man. These images to me are given. It is almost a collaboration that occurs between myself and the people that I'm photographing. And to see them and to view them with dignity and with compassion. in someone's most harrowing moments of their life. And I'm there to bear witness. What is the responsibility that we have? What is the responsibility that I have with this young girl's life? She just finished saying her last rites to her husband who's in that tent back behind the family. To say that she faces an uncertain future is a vast understatement. I'm pretty much always working alone in these situations. An interpreter sometimes is there, sometimes is not. But the idea is to bring back these images, to bring them from that third world, to bring that from that place back to what is our space, bring them back to the center of our media, to our Time magazines, to our Newsweeks, to indeed today our new ideas of technology and how these images are going to be consumed in the future. How do we translate these stories into the experience of today when we look at the old models and we're looking for new?
At first, I reversed the image of a concept of a zoo, and I took my cage out to the polar bears. There's about a seven to ten day window once a year where you can actually view the polar bears so they collect and gather in this one spot. So it was a different perspective looking through my bars at him who is free. Many of the Inuit are said now to be incarnating through the polar bears to experience their last days. The bears are slowly starving to death. This is where they first gather, waiting for this to freeze over. The problem is that it's taking longer for this ice to freeze over and it's thawing earlier, so the bears, instead of having three, three and a half months to feed, to mate, are now having two and a half months. It was such an honor to be there, to witness. To see the eyes of something that doesn't look like an animal looking back at me that looks more human to me. And to feel the rage and the sorrow. It was a collection of other photographers, maybe six, who were on this tundra buggy. We had to protect ourselves. We were up high about six feet. And this bear wandered over incredibly close. The woman next to me wasn't making any photographs. And to me, I was a photojournalist, so I'm there working with my short lenses. They have the big, long 600 millimeter bazookas. So for me, it was an incredible opportunity. And I asked the woman next to me, well, why aren't you photographing this bear? I mean, it, this bear to me so perfectly exemplifies their struggle. And she looks at me and, and she says, um, well, the bear's not perfect. I'm not going to be able to sell him. And I'm just thinking to myself, my God, so he's just a pelt to you. And what is it about this struggle that I'm seeing in a different way? Their plight is our plight. And all of us being one, this unified soul, and these two bear cubs, I mean, each one of their paws are perfectly lifted in the front and the back without looking at one another. There's a language that they speak. You can see how thin the bears are. Look at his stomach. This is a piece I did for Vanity Fair for the Green Issue. These are, of course, done from the helicopter, as I'd never get access on land. There's no way Massey would let me or anyone from the magazine anywhere near it. Worked with a lot of incredible people. People just like many of you in this room who are struggling themselves to have their voice be heard. The bill travels up and down the entire East Coast telling what's happening to Kayford and what his town used to look like in 1951 and what it looks like now and everything's gone. <laughs> 